So right now we're in the Matlahool State Marine Reserve. Wild Coast's Lily Mulligan steadies herself as waves rock her boat just west of the La Jolla Cove Beach. A beautiful park, but where are the boundaries? You can't exactly tell. The underwater park is located between the rocky cliffs of Point La Jolla and Scripps Pier. It covers about a square mile. There's another underwater reserve just north of the pier, making this a pretty large marine protected area. Mulligan says the underwater scenery is just as spectacular as the scenery in many of California's iconic parks. You would see a beautiful kelp forest beneath us with all of the beautiful ecosystems that are replenishing within the marine protected area. There's our beautiful submarine canyons off of Scripps, and this creates a beautiful area for biodiversity. There's, it's lush if you look beneath the water. But on the surface, those spectacular views are invisible. Even kayakers who recently got a tour of the area had to use their imagination. The largely opaque water keeps the park's wonders out of view, but the murky ocean can't hide the success of California's marine protected areas. So far, it looks great. Uh, what we know is that in many cases, uh, size, abundance, diversity, and biomass of the wildlife and fish inside is uh, doing better than outside of protected areas. But maintaining and building on that success story takes work. Wild Coast regularly surveys San Diego County's marine preserves, helping an understaffed fish and game department make sure the areas remain protected. We are doing boat-based MPA watch, so we are traveling through MPAs and we're looking at how folks are using them and then keeping track of all those things. Lisa Gilfillan is a Wild Coast conservation manager. And then we're also checking on our M2 radar units. So we have three radar units in the area. And part of what we have to do is just make sure that they're functioning properly. So we get on the boat and then we see what the radar is picking up on. And then we visually look for those same things that the radar is seeing just to confirm that everything's working properly. That's all aimed at making sure people take advantage of the opportunity to see the reserves, while at the same time protecting the biological riches that grow inside a preserve's borders. In this marine protected area, fishing is not allowed. For the most part, there's you know people interacting in these spaces the way they should be, um, without taking resources, without taking fish or invertebrates, for instance. But there's a there's a few bad apples out there, and yes, we're able to keep an eye on those in some ways. But yeah, some do get away with it. That even happens in the Channel Islands, which are a good distance away from the mainland and most of the state's people. But park officials there see more positives than negatives. By and large, people are law abiding. And once the law's on the books, even if they fought it tooth and nail as something they didn't want, uh, once it's on the books, we see a high level of compliance uh, with the laws. And most of the time when the laws are being violated, it's out of ignorance. They didn't know that they were fishing in a closed area. Restricting fishing is key to showing how those regions would develop without human interference. And that can help researchers better understand the impact of things like climate change. Mobley says new remotely controlled underwater submersibles are helping science and making the case for the reserves. When people see the video in a public stakeholder meeting, their eyes light up and they go, oh, I get it. They see all these incredible creatures, this really complicated structure on the bottom, how fragile it is. Mobley says the key to keeping the marine protected areas vibrant lies in the ability to make the invisible visible. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.